Hello, hi there, how are you? Hope you are doing fine. So today we will be driving the equations of motions through algebraic method. And uh, this derivation will assume that our acceleration is a constant or it is a uniform acceleration. So let's dive into the first equation of motion. Now the first equation of motion, we will drive it using accelerations. So we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity or speed. So let us draw, write down the equation for acceleration. Acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. This is our change in velocity over time. You can go ahead and say change in time as well. But uh, for simplicity, we will use this uh, notation here. Our time only will, will be one. So our initial time is zero. So right now, uh, using this formula, we can see that acceleration is equal to the difference between final velocity and initial velocity divided by time. So now, here the t is dividing here we can move it to the left hand side there it will be multiplying with acceleration and as you can see acceleration times time is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity now we will move the initial velocity to the other side and become the final velocity will become initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So this is our first equation of motion through the manipulation of, uh, through the manipulation of formula of acceleration. So in problems where, where we have to find any unknown and we are given the rest of the values, we can do so using this equation. Now let's look at second equation of motion. Let us suppose a body travels from point A to point B. There. Here it's a, there is a distance traveled under t time. And as we know, the acceleration is constant. This is assumed. So if I were to ask you that I have seen a velocity of an object and it travel in t time. What's the di distance traveled there? So you will say, well, that's pretty easy. The velocity is equal to distance over time, but it should be displacement for simplicity. We will assuming it is a distance. Distance over time, that's very simple. And now if I have to find distance there, I will just simply multiply velocity with time. Uh, I will say, oh, okay, that's that's fine. But what if we had two velocities? If I saw some velocity here, let's call it initial velocity, and saw another, some type of another velocity there, uh, final velocity, then you, you don't have a single velocity. You will have a, a very different velocity. So is there any way for us to find out the velocity in order for us to find the distance. Well, you can say that there are two velocities. Why don't I just add them together and it becomes an average velocity. And using that average velocity, I can multiply it with time to get my distance. And that's exactly true. So we will assume it was average velocity and average velocity is final velocity plus initial velocity divided by two. And we can assume this velocity to be average velocity. And using that notion, we can write this here as like this. Now, uh, but so that is what's the intuition for substituting just simple velocity with final velocity plus initial velocity divided by two because it's the average velocity. Let's move further. 
so now I'm going to substitute uh, the final velocity value from the first equation of motion which was final velocity equals to initial velocity plus acceleration into time why because I want to eliminate final velocity and there are some problems in physics where we don't know the final velocity so we want to only find out the distance using only the initial velocity and acceleration so I'm going to substitute the final velocity value which is this into this equation or you let's call it equation 1 after substituting that value into equation 1 I'm going to parenthesis put parenthesis here in order to signify that value and initial velocity will be in its stable standard place now it has been converted into this form here let us simplify the numerator there this will become two initial velocities two times initial velocities and acceleration into time will stay there now there is only one way uh, there are two ways for us to do uh, to manipulate this equation further and that is either we can multiply time then divided by two or divided by two and multiply by time but I will go ahead and multiply by t inside this expression there so the distance will become 2 v t plus a t squared because t multiplied with this term here in order to become t squared multiplied by 2 now the 2 in the denominator will get multiplied 2 times separate uh, uh, sorry will get divided separately on these terms there leaving us with this i can cancel out the twos there and we are left with initial velocity into time plus acceleration into t square so in problems where we have to find distance but only using time and initial velocity and acceleration we can use the second equation of motion so this is the derivation of second equation of motion let's move forward now let's derive third equation of motion as we saw previously you will, uh, during the derivation of second equation of motion we came up with this expression there or this formula there which uh, signified that you can find the distance s or you can replace it with t whatever you like doesn't matter and using the average velocity and multiplied with time you can find the distance but what if we got a problem where we don't know the time but we know other quantities and we have to find a simple one unknown there so right now we will be doing this so you now i have to i want to eliminate t there and during this elimination i don't want to introduce many other variables or another uh, another irrelevant variables there so i know only one equation that will be relevant which is the equation of x uh, the formula for acceleration which is the difference between velocities divided by time now i can uh, swap the acceleration for time acceleration will come down there and it will become this so now i can substitute the value of time there with the upper equation and it will become this it will become minus final velocity initial velocity and divided by acceleration so now we got this equation area. now we can manipulate this further and first the denominators will simply just multiply with each other because that's what fractions that's what happens in fractions so we'll get a common denominator there now 
this will become a very familiar expression which we have seen plenty of time in algebra which is a square minus b square equals to a square a plus b a minus b so if we got this uh, expression multiplying with each other we can simplify it and write it like this so here a is the final velocity and b is the initial velocity so we can replace them i can uh, multiply them out but it will take time so just take the we are just taking the shortcut here final velocity square minus the initial velocity square and times 2 plus 2 distance now we can so further simplify and multiply uh, this expression or this term right there so let me place the above content there and we arrive here with this final equation here which is which is final velocity square minus initial velocity square is equal to two times acceleration into distance so this is the third equation of motion